We are going to take what we've learned so far and apply it to a web page. We'll be using a lot of the various properties that we've discussed about Grid up until this point. I also wanted to introduce you to a couple of the item properties. We'll be talking about Justify Self, Align Self, and Order. The Justify Self content aligns content for specific grid items along the row axes, while the Align Self aligns content for a specific grid item along the column axes. We'll look at what these can do in an actual page. Here's what we're going to start with, and here is what we're going to transform this page into. This is the HTML that I'm using. I have a section with a class of container. It contains the header, a main element that wraps around two figure elements, and an article, and then a footer exists inside of the section. I already have some starting CSS, but nothing that is formatting the page in any specific way. These are things that are just adding colors, padding, text alignment, and it is worth noting that I did apply a max width on the paragraphs that are located inside the figure. Let's go ahead and transform the page. What I want to do is I want the main section to actually contain multiple columns and multiple rows. So let's start off by making a rule for main. We're going to tell main to display as a grid element. The main item wraps around both of the figures and an article which has a little summary of text right here. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and format our grid using the grid template columns. I'm going to use my repeat function and create two columns that are 1FR. Next I'll create rows by using grid template rows and once again I'm going to use the repeat function but this time I'm going to create three rows and in regards to a size they will be auto sized. That means the size is going to be based on the content. If we save our page and we refresh, you can see how everything has been reconfigured in some way. Now currently I've specified a grid that has two columns and three rows. So because I have three items, the first item goes into the first column, the second item goes into the second column, and then in regards to the rows, it only needs two rows right now, so it's created two rows. Now even though I specified three rows, you can see I only really need two rows because of the amount of content that is currently inside of my grid. Until we add more content, it will just ignore that other row. I just wanted to show you what would happen if we put code that doesn't always work out with the content that you have. Grid will try to help you however it can. Now what I want to do is I want this article item to actually span across two columns. So let's go ahead and do that next. I already have a selector for main article. I'm going to go in here and we're going to add a grid column property, which is actually one of our item properties. We already discussed these. These are ways that we can tell items to take up more space or less space. So I'm going to tell it to span two columns. If we refresh our page now, you can see that now this article is taking up the entire width that is available within our grid. Now what I would ultimately like to do is I would like this article to display before the figure elements. Without touching my HTML, I can reorder the elements using the order property. You probably remember the order property from the Flexbox portion of the course. It works in the exact same way. So I can reorder elements and have them appear in a different order. Negative numbers will pull them up, positive numbers will push them down. Now what I want to do next is I want the fig caption to actually overlay on top of the figure element. If you look in my HTML, the figure element surrounds an image, a fig caption, and a paragraph. I would like the image and the fig caption to take up the same space. I just want the fig caption to appear on the bottom and then have the paragraphs appearing underneath. It is possible to layer items using grid, which is really awesome. So let me show you how this works. What I will do is I'll go ahead and I'll turn my figure element into a grid container. It is possible to nest grid items. You simply are going to take an element that may be an item and if you use display grid, then it also becomes a grid container. 
now that figure is a container, I can target the various elements. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to specify where we want these elements to reside within the grid. Currently, because I never defined any columns or rows, if we save our page and we view this, and let me turn on a grid overlay so we can see what's happening, you can see that it actually automatically created three implicit rows, a row for each descendant of the figure element. So the image is taking up one row, the caption is taking up another row, and finally the paragraph is taking up the third row. I will go ahead and make a selector for my image element and for the fig caption. I'm going to use a group selector because we need to define similar types of properties. We're going to use grid row and I'm going to tell the items to start at the first grid line and span to the next grid line in relationship to the rows. We're also going to do a similar type of thing with the grid column. The reason that I'm specifying these together is I actually want them to take up the same space within the grid. If I refresh now and you see my page, you can see that the caption is sitting on top of the image. The reason that it is doing this is because these now share a grid track. So they are existing inside of the first row and the only column of the figure grid. What I'd like to do is I would like the image and the caption to go ahead and appear in the horizontal center. In order to do that, I'm going to go back to my figure element and I'm going to use our justify content. I'll set this to center. And now if we save and refresh, you can see how these items are going to center align. It also solved the problem of the fig caption being too large. If we look at our figure grid, you can see that now the grid fits nicely around the elements. In essence, it is restricting the fig caption. The next thing that I'd like to do is I want to move the fig caption so it appears at the bottom portion of the picture. We can do that by using the align self property. Now remember the align self property allows you to align content for a specific grid item along the column axes, which is exactly what we want to do in this case. So I will simply add an align self to my fig caption and we will tell this to align to the end. When I refresh my page, you can see how the captions now appear at the bottom portion of the image. The final thing that I'd like to do is just add a gap along my elements and I'm going to apply the gap to the main element. That is the first item that we applied grid to. So we will go ahead and we'll add a grid gap and I'll set this to one rem. If I save now and refresh, you can see that I have grid gap appearing around the elements that are children of main. So this just creates some separation. My page is responsive and as I resize my page, the elements will stay within the structure of the grid as we defined it. Using grid gives you tons of flexibility in building pages to appear exactly how you want. The more you use grid, the easier it will be for you to understand how it works and soon you'll be incorporating it into your projects.